All right, now that we've closed up the guitar body, we want to install our bindings. First step in that is bending our bindings. Um, bending the bindings is gonna be very similar to the way that we bent our sides. Uh, we're gonna put them on the bending machine and heat them up and uh, try to get them bent to shape. We are going to need uh, four pieces of binding. In your kits, you should have um, flame maple uh, or ebony, uh, depending on which way you wanted to go. The reason I asked you to select uh, six pieces in that guitar kit is because we want to have four to bend and two extras, either just in case one or two of these breaks or so that you're able to bind your fretboard later. The first thing that we want to do with these uh, bindings is get them taped together um, and get them set up in the sandwich and get ready to bend. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tape these together so that they uh, stay pretty straight when they're in the sandwich and also so that they don't overlap on top of each other and uh, cause issues inside of here. We also want to make sure that they stay aligned. Because I don't really want them to kind of go like this or this inside this sandwich. I want to keep them as straight as possible. And if they're inside there reinforcing each other, uh, that actually helps. All right, now these are gonna sit inside this sandwich um, just like we did with the sides, but I do want to uh, spritz these a little bit and I wanna get these wet. I'm not gonna steam them, I'm not gonna soak them. I'm just gonna get them a little bit wet to help me gauge when I can hear them sizzling. And then I am also gonna wrap them and to wrap these, I am going to use uh, parchment paper, again. Just like I used for the uh, sides. You can use aluminum foil, and you can use nothing. I. I wrap them uh, because I believe that wrapping them does help retain some of the heat, some of the moisture, and it helps if there is any staining to be done from the slats, although these are stainless so I don't have that issue. And even though I'm not really steaming them to bend them, I don't want them to dry out completely and end up case hardened and brittle. So that's another reason why I wrap those. All right now. That should be right in the middle, all the way down. Make sure this is aligned correctly. All right, that looks good. Okay, the uh, bindings are in place. I've got them locked in at the bottom. Yeah, the alignment's good. 
So now I am starting my timer for safety. Plugging that in. I'm going to set it for about 300. We get my thermal couple in place. And I am going to grab a spring clamp to keep the back end of this in place as well. While this is warming up, I'm gonna get this waist in place. Just keep some pressure on the bindings against the uh, bending blanket. Okay, we are up to uh, right at 250. So, any time about now, I expect to see or hear the sizzling and steaming. Okay, that I can back off right now. So I'm gonna take that spring off to allow those sheets to move independently of each other so I don't get bunched up um, in the uh, lower bout there. The bindings are a little more forgiving than the sides are uh, because they are smaller. They're about the same thickness though. But I do tend to go a little bit faster with those bindings. Okay. And every once in a while, I just take my uh, block, any block, and just squeeze that a little bit and try and convince the, uh, that lower bout to bend, as well as um, moving any extra material um, in the bindings or in the sandwich to go up this way. Now I am hearing that sizzle. I'm seeing a little bit of steam, which uh, I'm sure that the camera and the microphone are not picking up. It's pretty subtle. Just going back and forth on these. Almost all the way down, not quite. I haven't found any good rules of thumb when it comes to bending and speed. You really just kind of have to use a little bit of intuition, which is difficult if you don't have a good mental catalog of doing this before. But really, once you see that steam, you can start dialing these down and go down maybe every 10 or 15 seconds. Now the upper bout <clears throat> is just as prone to cracking and breaking and bending um, as the waist is, and in some cases maybe even a little bit more.
I'm just kind of take my time a little bit, but not too slow, getting that bending. And if you hear that cracking, it's not anything to be worried about. On this particular one uh, machine, these um, metal slats grab onto the threads um, on here and they kind of click along. Just about closed up on this side. I'm gonna crank it all the way down. All right, so now um, this is cranked down, the waist is cranked, everything looks good, I'm happy with this. I'm going to dial down my heat to about 250. And I'm gonna let it sit there for about five minutes. And I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. And I'll come back uh, in five. And I'll let this sit in the mold for just a little bit longer, let it cool down. Um, and if you don't have time to do that, of course, you can take it out at that point. Um, it's really um, just a matter of, you know, having that luxury of time um, to be able to let it sit in here. So I'm going to let that sit in here a little bit longer after the five minutes is done. Let it come down to room temperature itself, and then I'll pull the bindings out. Right now, it looks like my temperature regulator is doing a good job of keeping me within that 250 range, plus or minus 10, so I'm happy with that. I'm just going to let that go for a few more minutes and then I will turn it off and let it cool down uh, at room temp uh, for maybe another 30 minutes. Hopefully it's come down to where it's uh, cool enough to handle by then. Now make sure that when you are done um, with your heating blanket with your controller that you get everything unplugged. Unplug the blanket from your controller unplug your controller from the wall. We want to do everything we can to make sure that we do not present ourselves a fire hazard. Um, this is a fairly um, dangerous setup if you don't have safety precautions in place like uh, a timer or uh, some sort of reminder. So just make sure that when you're using these heating blankets that you are as safe as possible. Stay safe and we will see you in the uh, next video for routing the binding channels. You never wait and stand a change.